Hey guys, it's Laird here, and this is the second part of my Tron Glow Enhanced Material tutorial. In this part, I'll show you how to make you, your material cycle through colors. And let's get straight to it, shall we? So we remove this single color uh, parameter, we won't need it. And let's start with the time constant, uh, because we need to cycle through something. And this, this is the value that will change through, through the time, essentially. So every other second you will see different color, or even every other millisecond, even so. So uh, we have several ways of how we could actually cycle through the colors, but let's take the simplest ones, and let, so let's take a sign of this uh, time constant, or time variable. So we take sign, and as a period, let's take something like... Um, let, let's take five for a uh, for beginning. And if we just start previewing this, let's see. So it goes to black, it goes to minus one, then it goes to zero, goes to one, because sign varies from minus one to one. Okay, so we start stop previewing this node. Okay, so uh, first of all, we don't want to go uh, negative because uh, the value of minus one doesn't mean anything for any color or brightness. So let's add one to this. And then it will cycle from zero to two. We also don't really care about two. So after this, let's um, divide the result by two. And if we divide the result of, of the uh, range of zero to two by two, we get a range of zero to one, which is exactly what we need. Uh, I haven't used the divider in other instances of this material, so it doesn't really be, it isn't really a big deal. It will just not get so so precise and so smooth color transitions. Okay, so if we just preview this now, we get this. So it cycles from black to white essentially, and that's nice. So let's stop previewing this one. Now this is just just a one channel essentially for us. So what we will do is we will take a second channel, and second channel can be uh, cosine, for example. Okay, and let's take the same period of 5 here. And um, let's see, let's, let's do the same thing here, because uh, the ranges for these functions are the same. Okay, and now let's preview this guy. Yeah, you can see that, of course, the variation is, is different because it's a different function, but the idea is the same. So now uh, let's just have these two nodes expanded and check these boxes there to make them live nodes. And after the initialization, you will get this going. Let's see. So you can see that they are basically switching independently from each other, which is nice. Uh, so we get two colors independently. Uh, this will be R, this will be uh, B, B channel. So we will need one more. And one more will be, of course, blue. Let's tick these off because they eat some processing power. Um, so let's take one more of these. Copy, paste, Control c Control v Now, if we just put it here, it will have the same, uh, the same graph as this one. So it will be white at the same time that this one is white. And we don't like this. We want to, them to cycle between all the color combinations. And essentially, how does it work? Well, I will show you. Uh, let's go to the... Uh, Let's go to the vector constant, three vector, yeah. If I open, open this color picker uh, and I just go here, yeah, uh, it will not switch in real time, I'm afraid. So, okay, let me just go to my map and take this material instance. Okay, now if I go here, and I start to rotate this um, controller here, you will see that I'm cycling through the colors. And this is the kind of effect we want to achieve, basically. There will be some rough edges here, but it's it's all about, you know, achieving the right formula. And here also, it's not a good spot, because the blue is really dark, even if it's glowing. But the idea is that we will be cycling something like this one, like this way. And you can see how the RGB change through the time. 
Okay, so that's kind of everything we want to achieve. Now let's go back to our material. Now, um, <laughs> we have period of five, which is okay. So to, to make this one uh, cycle basically uh, asynchronously from the first one, the, from the first channel, we want to take the time and add something to it. And let's add 2.5 because this is half of the period of, of, of our sine and cosine here. So if we add them together, and again we go live notes, live updates, and wait a little bit. You can see that they are now independent from each other. Not totally, so you could really refine the formula, but that's that's kind of what we want. That's enough. Okay, so now we have these three guys, and now we need to build a color from them, right? Because these are independent channels for us. So how do we do this? Well, we append. First we append R and G. Then we control C, control V, and append R, G, and B. When we have this going for us, we put it here. Let's see how it looks like. Here we go. So the color is switching, but not as good as we would like to. Um, let me do something a little bit uh, unprecise here. Let's, let me add uh, half a period to the cosine and see how well this will look like. Okay. Doesn't actually doesn't really matter because uh, the violet is coming from um, blue and G, I believe. So it doesn't make much difference here. Let's wait a little bit, and here we go again. So uh, this is the color cycling, uh, and actually. Uh, this issue with the it's with the material becoming too dark, I think I did resolve it removing the dividers. So let's just take a second and do that. Uh, let's do it only for blue channels. See what happens? Yeah, it helps a little bit. But now we don't get red channels. So let's let's remove dividers from all three and see what happens. Okay, well, it doesn't cycle through all the colors, but you can definitely see that it's it kind of has the pleasant effect. Now, uh, you may leave the dividers and you know just just refine the formula is in the way that you would like to. Uh, but for for this tutorial, I'll leave it here. The main point is that you got the uh, mathematical idea behind this color switching that we have now. This is basically the breathing effect, if we could call it this way. Uh, now, how do we control this? Do we put any variables here? Well, I'd like to have a period variable uh, controllable, but this is again you can you can refine the formula to make just to use the period just um, outside the sine cosine nodes. Um, what I suggest doing, of course, is making the period something bigger, like uh, fifteen and fifteen and fifteen. And remember, when you change the period, you have to change this variable also. So half of 15 is 7.5, so I'll just put it here. And now with a bigger period, the color switching is slower. And you can just adjust it to your needs. So uh, this is this is very basic way of uh, color breathing or color cycling. Uh, I hope you learned something new. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you hope to see you on my channel. Uh, stay tuned for new tutorials. Bye-bye.